being recorded. I'm so vain. I guess you know this song is about me. <laughs> John comes out of his shell all of a sudden. <laughs> I love it. Um, all right, everyone, gather your tools, whatever you're playing with this evening. I got to find my green I'm working with. Um, you good? You have anything you need? <laughs> I'm spying on Arlene. <laughs> All right. So, do you want your face in your hands? <laughs> <laughs> All right. How's everyone doing? Happy to be here. Mm -hmm. Happy to be here too. Yeah, it's been a, a nonstop day. I'm glad to be in this space with you all right now. I heard from a few people that they were not going to be able to join us. So um, hence the recording, people will go back and watch later. Um, okay, here comes Myrna. Michelle, did you go back and watch the video from the other couple of sessions? Um, I kind of caught up. Oh, there you go. And, but I'm still, you know, somewhat behind. I still have to fill in and I have to do the background. So that then I will do it again over the weekend, probably. Great. But it's been great having that time with her to catch up. <laughs> good, good. Um, let me turn this. And Micah, we ran out and bought the light gray pens. Micron, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get them for everyone for next session because they're really fun. So it's a very light gray. I don't know whether we should have gotten the darker. Yeah, next there's one. Two, there's two shades. Yeah, there's a, a very light one and then a medium. Um, I have both. Maybe I'll get get everyone both. Get everyone both. Then, well, I, I for one would appreciate. It. <laughs> Done. We'll do. On my yeah, screen. get everyone both. They're fun. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. I'm going to spotlight my video so that you can see my tile a bit bigger. Let's focus. No. 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 Wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> Shelly, you shushing your cat? I'm going to mute everyone. If you're not muted, go ahead and mute yourself. Okay. All right. Let's settle in and get started. Find a comfortable spot. Let's take some deep breaths. In through the nose and out through the mouth. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. In through the nose and out through the mouth. Keep breathing slowly with intention. I don't think I said it here, but I, I think it was my circle meeting last week. I was, we started with some breathing and upon reflection, I, I think that every meeting should start with three deep breaths. <laughs> I think it would, um, set the tone and set everyone at ease. Uh, just consider that as you go from, you know, space to space in your daily life, as you transition from one thing to the next, maybe three deep breaths uh, will help to center you in each new moment. Check in with your body. Notice if there's any tension, any stress. If something is aching or sore or hurting, send love to that space. And with that love, some ease, some release, just a gentle calming of whatever it is that is bothering you in this moment. 
could be something irritating from your day that happened. It's, a, it's an, um, an emotional burden. Notice it for a moment, and then if you can, for this next little bit, set it aside. Take a moment now to think about something in your day that went well. Something you are grateful for or proud of. Something that felt good. Hold that in your mind's eye for a moment. It doesn't have to be anything big, could be a small kindness, could be an accomplishment, something to check off your to-do list. Notice it, acknowledge it, enjoy it. Continue breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. In through the nose and out through the mouth. Tonight on our tile, which we've been working on these last couple of sessions, we're going to fill in the background, hopefully completed. If not, I'll, I'll send you along with how to finish on your own. And I want us to think about as much as we've, we've spent time and attention on the foreground, this really striking piece with a magnifying glass and this beautiful shell, all the things we zoom in and focus on in our lives, the background is important too. It gives texture, gives context, it grounds whatever is in front of us. So like with all things Entangle, we can extrapolate that out into the rest of our lives. What's in your background? that you may not give a lot of attention to on a regular basis, but it's there and it's important. It's beautiful. Maybe tomorrow you'll spend some time noticing the background instead of zoomed in on the thing right in front of you. With another couple of deep breaths, Set an intention for our Zentangle practice tonight. How do you want to spend this time? Where will your mind be? Or where won't it be? Perhaps a word or a mantra to keep you centered and grounded throughout our time this evening will be helpful. Think of a word or a phrase that you can come back to when you find your mind wandering or if you're feeling frustrated or find yourself slipping into some self-criticism. Come back to that mantra. Return to the task at hand. Return to the breath. Another deep breath together. And when you're ready, open your eyes and we'll begin. So, um, I'm not sure where you are with your um, works, but I have about half of my background left to fill. That's um, a lot of ground to cover. So let's keep that in mind as we're working. Maybe we wanna go a little bigger. Um, I'm saying that as much uh, to myself as to you. And I think I want to start with a bit of background that will actually um, end up sort of then lying on top of some other things. So it'll be background, but foreground for something else, if that makes any sense at all. Um, so we're gonna do a Molygon chain. Um, when, when they came out with Molygon years ago, and I'm sure we've done this before, but not in a while, um, I have trouble with how they the Zentangle folks draw Molygon. I, it's never in, particularly enjoyable for me. So I don't know how it came about, but I invented my own um, based on the shape. And so I'm going to teach you um, my Molygon chain, which I, I enjoy and do a lot. So actually, I'm going to put my pen down for one moment because I, I like to anchor it with a string. So find a little area wherever you want to work, 
I'm thinking I have a little room up here and I'm going to snake my Molygon chain. I'm going to have it coming so up from behind the magnifying glass. And I'm just going to have it kind of swoop off the page. This is just an anchor. The line's going to disappear. It's just a place to start as we um, draw this Molygon chain. So the Molygon shape is, I'll just draw it here on the back of this envelope for you. It's a crescent, like a crescent moon. And so you can start with a C shape and then it's attached at the ends and then it just grows like that. So like a, a Pac-Man sort of, or a moon. And then the way I, do molygon then is then I on a, along our string is I then do one facing the other direction and then the other way so they kind of go back and forth following our string line so it's totally different from how the Zentangle folks do it but it, it the effect is cool so here we go. Let's do some Molygon chains. I'm going to do use my green pen. Um, we could start really on either end. I'll start up here. Doesn't matter which side you start on, but I'm going to make my first C shape right on my line. Let's see if I can. Okay. And then Aura it or make that um, larger crescent around it. And th these can be all different kind of, they take on a life of their own. And then I'm on the other side of the line, going to make the small crescent and then go around it. And mine, that one went off the page, which is fine. Next one underneath. And on top. Have we done this before? Is it familiar? Maybe? Long nope. time ago. So we're just going to go back and forth all the way down our um, string line that we drew in pencil. Actually, Michelle, I did a lot of these on um, Andrew and Rebecca's Ketuba. So if you come up against your magnifying glass or another shape or anything, just draw behind. Think about how it would go if it just continued underneath. So here mine. It's here. And maybe just a last little one coming around the other side. So once you've done that, we're just going to go ahead and aura this whole thing now as one shape all together. So just a nice close aura. Take your time. Following the inner and outer curves. Remember to turn your tile if you need to so that your hand can stay comfortable.
I don't know if this happens to you, but I, I haven't, you know, I tangled for a few minutes earlier today getting ready for tonight and then it's been hours and it's like it falls out of your hand. Kind of get got to get your hand back into the groove. Okay, so we've got this kind of a ribbon sort of a thing happening. You could put almost anything inside these uh, this molygon shape, um, but I think to echo sort of all of these orbs that have been going on all over this piece that we're working on, we're gonna we're gonna cram some orbs into our molygon shapes. If you have a different um, bent if you if you want to try something else please do it um i think the th this is your tile and the the more diversity um, we have at the end when we do our mosaic the more beautiful it will be so um don't feel bound um but i'm going to do some orbs so i'm going to start in the center of this molygon shape here with a big round orb just kind of snugged right in there and then i'll tuck the others right in behind it on either side. And I'm coloring in the interstices. Okay, so it's going to look like that. You can go back and forth or you can do all the ones on one side and then turn it around and do the other however you like. So I like the echo of this theme that's kind of running through all of this of these smushed orbs used in so many different ways. Forgetting, I cannot see. say this a lot but I like this part of Zentangle once you've kind of laid down what you're doing then you just rinse and repeat let me turn the sound off here get the focus I didn't turn that one off. Again, don't be afraid to draw off the page. Just imagine how it would go or to draw behind something. Okay, I'm going to flip mine around so that I can do the other side.
I don't know if you're in a space where you can hear the rain, but we've got it on the, the roof in my office here, and it's lo a lovely background. Just noticing the background. If you're using a color other than black, sometimes when you go back over the ink, like in the interstices, it, it darkens it. It's a nice effect. I've got a couple more here. If you're done, you can revisit any other areas that you might want to give a little love to. You could sit and breathe, focus on the breath. One more a little bit of one over here. Okay. That's fun. How are we doing? We need another minute. Or are we ready to move on? Okay, I mostly see heads down. We'll wait another moment. Okay, I'm going to move on. You can always come back to uh, filling in your orbs. The next one, I'm thinking I'm going to put, I'm going to do some work down in this little area here. Um, you could come up over here as well. I'm, I'm going to go for a smaller area because we've got kind of, I'm going to do a dense one called Bunzo. We've done Bunzo, but also not for a while. It's a similar shape as Molygon. Uh, but it grows in a different way. So Bunzo starts with the same shape as Molygon, just a little one, a little curve and a little crescent. And then you color it in. And then you make an, a larger one around it not touching although sometimes they do end up touching and that's fine too it's just that same molygon shape that we were doing and then coloring it in and the cool thing about bunzo is you can kind of grow them in all different directions 
so you can like send it over to the side like this you can start another one sort of right on top they really they can go any which way they're very playful and because there's a lot of ink they um they're called a drama tangle, so they, they give weight. So you can sort of fit them wherever you want. So it's just that those that crescent shape. And we're just gonna sort of tuck it in a little area wherever you see fit. I'm gonna play right here. I'm still using my green, but maybe you're using all different colors or maybe you're in black. So I'm gonna start right here in the little crook of my magnifying glass. And I'm gonna just start to grow some bunzo shapes here. And because we're filling in, you can do a lot of that sculpting of the line if you sort of wanted it to go in a different direction. You have a lot of flexibility because you can always go back and thicken a line, fill in. Funny, even though we're working on a it's only a half sheet of paper it does feel different than working on a tile we don't have all of the flexibility to turn the way we would otherwise let's see i'm gonna start another little one right here Just kind of let your bunzo take you where it wants to go. I'm drawing behind my magnifying glass right now.
this is definitely one of those tangles that everyone's bunzo is going to have its own unique personality. So just enjoy where it takes you. I'm going to put one here in the other corner going in the other direction. I'm going to keep going a little bit more. This might also be one of those tangles, or maybe I'm just feeling it that and I'm even if you're not done, you, sometimes you might need a little break from it, come back, do something else for a little bit and then come back. I'm sometimes on the fence about coloring in. Sometimes I really like it and then other times I wander and would rather be doing something else. And I'm going to fill in, I have one more little spot over here.
I'm going to finish mine off in this little section right there. So you can see how that's all kind of squished in there, you know, and maybe we'll find a way to have them sort of escape and come out somewhere else in a little while. But I think they look cute there for right now. Are we ready to head into some new territory? I'm going to zoom out a little so you can see the whole thing. Okay, so find a slightly larger area. Um, I'm gonna, where do I wanna go? I'm gonna sort of inhabit this section right here. And we're gonna put a grid tangle called cubine in here. Um, so I don't wanna fill this whole space. So I'm gonna go like right in this area here. And I don't want it to be a straight grid. I want it to kind of have some movement to it. So I'm gonna start and radiate. I'm gonna have my lines come kind of this way. And I'm not gonna make them too, uh, regular and i'm again i'm going to draw behind i'm going to go along with the flow of my uh huggins that we did last week Okay, and then I'm going to pick, I'm going to start my perpendicular lines as if I'm just going to use this as a, a jumping off point as if it's a Huggins, you know, just have it a, a way that these two tangles are interacting with each other now. I can even use the other one. So I sort of started in the middle. Okay, so we've got a grid here. Like, is there any way for you to increase your contrast? Is it just me or it, it's just, they're really pale. The green also is light, so. No, it's not, I don't know. It's just those lines are really hard. Well, it's just a grid. That so. did help. Here. It's just a wavy grid. Okay. And cubine is actually quite simple, but, um, and the shading is really what makes it pop. So maybe we'll um, shade cubine once we're done drawing it, just so that it, in this section, I usually like to shade everything all at once, but um, it's very satisfying um, when cubine is shaded. So I'm gonna start right in the middle, just so you can see. Um, it's, it's just a diagonal through the, pick a square, a square-ish shape. And then you just make a little square that connects to that line or like a little arrow. And then you color that whole little square in. So this takes a little time. 
you want to make sure that hopefully all of your diagonal lines that you're making are end up going in the same direction. So maybe you want to draw them all first, or maybe you want to go row by row. Here, I'll do another one. So the diagonal through the cube, the square shape, and then a smaller cube inside that kind of straddles the diagonal. Okay, and you want to try to make your little squares kind of proportionate to the the larger square that houses it because they're they are going to grow and change because we we didn't make exactly straight lines so just kind of go make sure that your interior cubes squares match the the one that houses it okay so i'm just going to go i'm going to do row by row i think Cantor, when you say matches it, what do you exactly mean? Um, I'm like, I'm thinking about this space that is, um, that they're proportional. Arlene over my shoulder saying it takes about a quarter, takes up about a quarter of it, which is a good way to think about it. Like if you were to make a, a grid inside your cube, it would fill about a quarter of it. Does that help? Maybe? Yes. I don't, I don't know if this helps or not, but I find that if I draw like my diagonal lines through everything at once before I add the grids, the extra squares, it helps me make sure that I'm putting the little squares in the right place. Yep, that definitely. Going to do this for the entire grid? Well, so that's a really good question. Arlene asked if we're going to do this for the entire oh. grid. I I was planning on it, but if you can't stand the thought of having to do this on all the squares that you just made, feel free to mix it up and put something else in the other in the other grids. Yeah, no, I. It was a good good question. Okay. We could morph. You know, I started right in the center. We could do, you know, half as cubine and then th this other half as some other grid tangle. Shall we do that? Let's do that. Did that just totally mess you all up? If you if it doesn't mess you up, let's I'm going to make this whole side cubine and then I'm going to save this side for something else. If you already started and you're going to go all the way cubine, stick with it. And if we're doing something else, give me a good idea of a good another good grid tangle we should do. How about the one where you draw like the curves on the lines? Mm-hmm. Bales. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. What that'll, that'll be a nice echo of um what we're what we have going on down here. Sure, we can do that. You could do be like. I know that's like a honeycomb one, but I don't think I've ever drawn that one. <laughs> It's really fun. There's always Knight's Bridge. There's always Knight's Bridge. So look, we have all these options.
I'm going to look in my handy Zenthology or Tangle for us for one second. Oh, there's Bee Light. Yeah. We could do flukes. I like Bee Light because it's a grid tangle that doesn't feel like a grid tangle. Hmm. Yeah. Sure. We can morph into Bee Light because that'll. Sure. Let's do that. I got to finish my cubines first. Okay, so all we need to do to shade cubine is put a little graphite in that upper piece. I don't even know how to explain. Um, just above the um, the interior cube that we made on, on the top part of the diagonal. A picture is worth a thousand words to see where I'm, <laughs> just look where I am shading. And I'm just putting a little bit of graphite. Okay, and then once you've got a little bit of graphite, just go ahead with your tortillon and just blend it just within that space, just to smooth out. And then suddenly it is this three-dimensional 
Hmm? It really does, right? Yeah, it really pops. All right. So just a couple options. I'll show you beeline and I'll show you bales. So if you want to do beeline, you can, you start in a corner with a little crescent in the corner just like crescent moon and then you just aura the rest of the cube i'm sorry the rest of the square so here and i would i would have them they go all in the same direction or you can have them sort of facing each other don't you put highlights in you can you can leave a little break if you want to you can do it however you want okay so that's e light and the highlight is just lifting your pen if you want to do it that way okay so that's be light if you want to do bales it'll be a little tricky you won't want to do it like right up against you'll only do one side of the the rice grain that we're going to do here we this but bales is the rice grain on either side like so for here i would only have a half of a rice grain <laughs> and then like that and then aura this inside shape and you could color it in or you could you know divide it in half however you want to do it so again here is this these rice grain shapes all around or uh, the inside and however you want to fill that interior space so you could do both you could pick one or the other. However you want to play around with that. Or if you have some other idea. So another one is um, flukes. Let's see, how does flukes go? Flukes is similar to cubine with a little square in the corner and then filling the space like that. So the possibilities are endless. Here are a couple to play with. You do you.
I'm doing some beeline, but I'm putting in my crescent shape in a whole row first, just to kind of get myself situated. It's the interesting thing about patterns. I mean, you really, anything repeated is a pattern. That sounds like an obvious thing, but it really creates a texture and a feel. Keep looking at our empty Huggins that we did last week. We definitely want to put something in there that may be for us to do as homework.
Okay. So some a question. Do would you rather spend the 25 minutes we have left filling in the rest of the background areas with tangles or would you like um to do a little shading to sort of get you going and you'll finish the background on your own you want to put it in the chat and let me know what you prefer if you want to tangle or shade in the time that we have left okay arlene says shading <laughs> marcia says shading <laughs> phyllis says tangle uh-oh <laughs> Maybe we'll split our time half and half. Anyone else have an opinion? Shading. Okay, three for shading. Anyone else? Okay. Okay, I got three for shading, one for tangle. I'm going to show you one more tangle. I'm going to show you one more tangle. It's, it's one we know and love. I'm going to use this little area over here. Um, we're going to do some hollow bow because this goes quick and it fills um, pretty quickly. Um, but you, and you can do fun things, fun variations with hollow bow. So hollow bow are just these overlapping sort of beams. <laughs> Myrna's going with the majority, so politic. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do some hollow bow. These are just kind of um, these spoking planks. So I'm just gonna start right here with a line just the, that starts on my mollygon and goes off to the edge. And then I'm just gonna give it some thickness with a parallel line. And I'm gonna, again, to sort of have my tangles interact with one another, I'm gonna spoke all of my first hollow bows, beams off of my, my mollygon uh crescents just kind of radiating out it's just a starting point but it's a it, it ties everything together the tangles are speaking to one another they're in relationship okay so once we have some laid down then we can start the ones that I always want to say underlap because it's the opposite of overlapping the ones that go under the ones that we've just drawn so they can be any which way but i'm going to start here. And have this one. Come under here. So it's again that idea of drawing behind I draw up to that first one I imagine what would happen underneath and then I continue out the other side. Okay, so here I'll show you again over here. Draw up to this one. Imagine how it would continue. But I'm picking up my pen and then I put it down and continue off the other side. And then I just aura that with a parallel line. They don't all have to underlap. <laughs> You may decide you want some others that kind of just fit in there. And you get some variety of going in different directions. Some may underlap more than one, they may not. And you can make this as dense or as open as you want to.
And then just a little something I want to show you, and then we're going to move away from uh, tangling. We're going to do a little shading. Is you can, um, they call it coffering. So if you aura inside these shapes now that you've made with your hollow bow, so you just aura the whole inside shape and then connect the corners of the outside shape and the inside shape, you get a sort of a jeweled effect. So here I'll show you again. This one kind of goes off the page, so I'll only have a couple of corners here, but. So that's a really fun, interesting thing you can do with hollow bow. If you are in the mood, you could color in the entire background. You could put stripes in the hollow bow, all kinds of things. So I'm auraing inside where the mollygon is too, and I'm kind of coffering that a bit and kind of make it up. pretty flexible and forgiving. I made my auras kind of thin, but you could make yours thicker. And if you looked at this and didn't know how we drew it, you would think, wow, that's impossibly hard. How did, how did that even happen? We know the secret. I'm just going to finish coffering and then I promise we will get to some shading. I hope that this larger tile and, and all of this background work has given you some inspiration and some ideas for how to tangle in the future. You know, it's fun to do this together, but really it's about what you then go and do in, in your own creative time. All right, so we've got some nice texture over there. I'm gonna zoom out so we can do some shading now. Might be too much. All right, so this is looking really great. Definitely 
need to think about what we want to put in here, I might bring back some of what we've something that we've already done, you know, maybe carry this over to this side as if it had gone underneath, maybe Bunzo escapes over here or grows over here. Um, I like to have in the background, um, I'd like to have patterns that come back. Um, because again, it helps to integrate the whole piece. Maybe, maybe our Huggins comes back on the other side, like it slips underneath and then comes out here. So I, I think we have plenty of ideas for what to do. We could even, you could carry your hollow bow through to the other side too, if you wanted. Um, so, but let's do a little shading. I'm going to turn this back around because for me, this is the right side up because the magnifying glass is in the lower corner in my mind. Um, I really want to focus on shading so that these things come up and everything else goes down. So that's mostly going to mean a lot of shading around this, um, these objects here. So I'm just going to start on the handle of my magnifying glass and I'm going to put down a nice thick, thick, thick layer of graphite. And I, we could shade the magnifying glass itself, but I, I think I mentioned this last time, I kind of like that even though it's the most realistic thing, it is also the most two dimensional. It's a stylistic choice. If you feel differently, you can shade that as well. So now I'm going to come around my shell shape. There's always that moment, at least for me, where I'm like, oh, I'm scribbling over all this beautiful line work that I just put down. But it's always worth it even if it's a little stressful in the moment. I'm gonna go all the way around. Even in the empty space, if you have any like I do, um, you can always go back and uh, put ink over the graphite, it'll be fine. You know, another way we could have gone is to just shade um, the items in the foreground and let everything else stay unshaded, but what fun would that be? But there's no right or wrong. These are just different options, different choices. Actually, this green pen looks really interesting when you shade it. Micron pens are cool because the ink really sits on top of the paper. So once you've got a good outline, I'm going to go in and with my tortillon, just kind of buff that out a bit. Invite the graphite into our background tangles. Leaving it darkest, closest to the magnifying glass and our shell shape, but you know, making sure that it doesn't all get the same shade of gray. Darkest to lightest. Take your time, I'm going in little circles and I kind of dip into the graphite and then pull it out.
looks a little bit choppy when we have so much of the background um, exposed there, but that'll all get filled in eventually. Or maybe yours doesn't, or maybe it's just my thing about not wanting to have any <laughs> open spaces left. So once you've done some of that, let's see. We can we can look at let's look at Huggins. So I like to shade Huggins with a little bit on either side of our telephone receivers. Thanks, Micah. You gotta go? Yeah, I've gotta come there. Oh, I'll see you in 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye. That's right. I'm just laying down a little bit of graphite. And here up top to where, where mine overlaps with cubine. Don't be afraid to shade over your other shapes. Oops, forgot some. Okay, and then when you're ready, go ahead and buff that out. Little circles using the tip, the side of the tip of the tortillon. So that looks neat. Let's see, what else? 
I would maybe shade the, the corners of these shapes here. I'm just putting a little bit of graphite in each of the corners. You can do the ones that have orbs in them too. And as always, this, this is just a suggestion. There's a you know a dozen different ways you could shade these or more. Take your tortilla and do some blending. So we're just going to finish this section and then I'll leave you to finish on your own, but hopefully we can do a little mosaic before we end for tonight. And I'm bringing a little bit of graphite like into these, the centers of what have now become like little flowers. And I'm, I didn't actually put any down with the pencil, but I'm, the tortillon is nice and loaded up so you can just kind of invite some shadow into those spaces if you want to with what's already on your tortillon. <clears throat> So just finishing up, we shaded cubine, you could shade um, bales by just, you know, putting a, a little bit on of graphite on one all along one side, lots of different things you could do. So I invite you to get creative and how you shade the rest of your piece. So hopefully you have ideas for how to finish up. If you have a moment, you can put your chop on it now, or you can wait until um, you're, you feel like you're complete. I'm going to put my chop here in my magnifying glass. if you want to write your name and date on the back I'm going to put that this was our January Zentangle at Temple Sinai 2023 all right I'm going to take mine off spotlight and I would love to see everybody's 
creations. Oh, I always forget that I can just put mine there. Oh, wow. These look phenomenal. Awesome. How do you like doing a, a bigger piece like this and, and kind of have it span the three sessions? Did you like something like that? Yeah. Great. Only if you can make the sessions. <laughs> Only if you can make all three yeah. sessions. Yeah. All right, Michael, will you send me this recording? Please? Yes, I will. Absolutely. Thank you. And was the last one recorded? I'd, I'd yes. Like if you email me, I will send it okay. to you. <laughs> okay. So, Micah, that, this is how far I got. It's looking great. Yeah, I'll come back over the other recording yeah. to get the rest of them. Beautiful. Great job, everyone. Well, thank you. This has been so much fun. Thank you. Uh, Email me, let me know if you have thoughts, if you like this format, if you want to go back to tiles um, and, and uh, we'll, uh, I'll see you in March, right? We have our next session starting March. Yep. Yes, we do. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, Vickers. <laughs>